the polymerase chain reaction is the key technique in modern molecular biology that allows us to increase the amount of DNA present for analysis. This could have a multiple range of uses, which include in forensic science and also in forensic archaeology, where we have vanishingly small amounts of DNA. In order to produce a DNA fingerprint or do any DNA sequencing, we need a minimal amount of DNA. Polymerase chain reaction allows us to produce that minimal amount of DNA. As you're aware, there are three stages to the polymerase chain reaction. In the first stage, the double-stranded DNA is denatured and made single-stranded. In the second stage, a small section of DNA, called a primer, is allowed to anneal to the target site in the DNA. The primer is typically between 10 and 20 bases long. In the third stage, the TAC polymerase enzyme then extends that primer and copies against the template. The DNA is copied in one direction only, 5' prime to 3'. Prime. So on one strand, the direction of copy is this way, and on the second strand, the direction of copy is in the opposite direction. The 5' prime and 3' prime ends being opposite on each strand. If we carry out the polymerase chain reaction, we need three different temperatures. Approximately 95 degrees for a minute will single strand the DNA, will denature it. Then the binding temperature for the primers in the second stage of the cycle is typically between 50 and 60 degrees. And then the third stage, the extension stage when the TAC polymerase copies, is carried out at an optimum of 72 degrees centigrade. If we repeat those cycles 30-fold, will produce up to a billion-fold increase in the target DNA. The machine that we see in front of us is a thermal cycler which carries out that cycling routine. Put very simply, it consists of a programmable calculator where we key in the individual cycle times and temperatures and the number of cycles. The really clever bit though is in the heating block in the centre of the uh, machine. This is composed of a novel ceramic material which allows temperature to change very quickly. Typically we'd set up our PCR reactions in these rather small tubes and that reduces the risk of evaporation during the heating cycles and also allows us to fit a rather large number of reactions in any one particular uh, experiment. So you make up the reactions rather simply by adding your dilute dianite DNA sample, a buffer. The buffer contains the four bases, A, G, C and T. The primers, which target the particular region of the DNA you wish to copy. And the TAC DNA polymerase. The tubes are made up and then added to the machine. We can do multiple replicates. In this case, we can produce 25 tubes in one experiment large machines would take up to 100. Once we've loaded the samples, we switch the machine on to its pre-programmed cycles, and typically after about three hours or so, 30 cycles, the machine would stop and hold your samples at four degrees centigrade. Then at your leisure, perhaps later the same day or the next morning, you would take those samples and analyze them directly by Agro's gel electrophoresis, where you would look directly, visually, for amplified fragments. That then is the polymerase chain reaction.